Yeah, so um, like Manny said, we were one of the beneficiaries. And um, industrial benefited because everyone stayed home for the most part. Everyone ordered everything online. And companies needed, and you needed Amazon. And they did a lot of, you know, they didn't go necessarily to Lincoln Road to Michael's stores or whatever, uh, or to Terry's offices. Um, but, you know, industrial now became the darling for, you know, everyone on this panel has the sexy stuff. You know, Neil has sexy hotels, Michael has Lincoln Road, Terry has 830 Brickle, you know, Ed Edgardo, sexy condos, sexy condos. and we were, we're just the <laughs> box, girl. right? So we sexy were in interest rates. Yeah, it's sexy. <laughs> no one ever likes Warren. Wait, don't <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm just joking. So we became very, very, very important to the economy. And, um, and because of the nature of the business, um, we became in demand. So our business went from 300, I'm talking about the United States, we used to build 300, not us personally, but in the United States, all of us in the industrial world built 300 million square feet in a normal year. We went to 600 million square feet. So now we are back to 300 million square feet. So things have, you know, just like you've seen, there's no more panic. Everything has, has normalized. Um, but why industrial has done well, and why it's traditionally done well, although under the radar, is because it has a lower, um, on, when you have a warehouse, you don't have to put in additional capital. So Terry's probably the poster child office. The one knock against office is you get a tenant, the tenant leaves, and you have to potentially, you know, move walls around and do this and do that. Um, so in a warehouse, it's a box. They move out of the box, you move somebody in the box. Kind of similar like with Michael and apartments, except on a, on a commercial. The other reason why, and like Warren said, we're in the best market in the country. So whether it's office or retail or apartments, you know, for us warehouse people, um, and it's no secret, but of all the sectors here, and Manny will vouch for this, probably industrial has the safest, safest future in South Florida because you cannot go, you could, but you typically you do not go vertical. So Edgardo and, and Terry and, and Michael, they could go vertical and create more and more floors and more and more inventory. When, in, when industrial, it's really just single floors for the most part. So we have, as we all know, a limited amount of land. So whether, again, we're building um, condos or office, we got the ocean on one side and we got the Everglades on the other side. And in Dade County, because we're in Dade County, there is still only, and it's going to sound like a lot, but it's not. We have maybe 1,000 acres left, 1,000 acres left of industrial land. This county uses 400, uh, sorry, this county uses 200 acres a year on industrial projects. So we have maybe five to six years left of industrial land. And industrial land, people don't typically want, you know, warehouses next to them. So it's hard to get land rezoned, and you can't go up higher. So for us, we have a very, we, we're very, very uh, confident in Dade County. We have a number of large projects, and we think it's like a great area. So you got a lot of, you know, we got a growing population, and we got a limited amount of land. So, you know, if you do the math, supply and demand, we think it's going to be a great future. And, and industrial has, and Warren can attest to this, some of the lowest debt in the country, right? So yep. default issues related to debt for industrial, almost insignificant. Yeah. But, the, you know, so you, and again, industrial generally is the, is the most favored nation today, at least. But, you know, you go to areas like Atlanta or Dallas, it's not the same like Miami. Because, you know, we don't, they don't have an ocean, they don't got the Everglades. They could keep going outside the perimeter. So they could create a lot more boxes. Dade County, you can't create many more boxes. And again, it's about distance and time. So yeah, we, you could go to Orlando, but to transport from Orlando and Miami to go back is long distance. Everyone wants something today. You know, Amazon is all about immediacy, right? They have now um, Uber delivery. You know, they have now we're building in Fort Myers a very big project. Uh, Amazon's going to start delivering refrigerators, mattresses. So this 
division that we're doing a building for is called an extra large division. So it's not just the toilet paper and the whatever, the little things and, you know, you're going to be seeing them delivering mattresses and refrigerators and televisions. So when you're in the School of Architecture and you start drawing, you couldn't draw, but you can just draw little blocks? I did. <laughs> it's, I, it's a funny story. I'm going to keep it short. But the, when I was in architecture, they, they said, you know, you had to do a daycare center. So I created just a box. There's a daycare center. <laughs> There was a young man from a very creative man from South America, and he had it look like a circus tent, and you know, and it, it with kids and animals, and the, the professor loved it. So he got an A, I got like a C. I'm like, but who's going to build it that you can't afford to build a circus tent structure? He said, that's not the point. <laughs> so I went back to business. Thank, thanks,